I'm here in Arson Allen uh, and we're looking at the Jagdpanzer 38 that they have here. This is remarkable because this is pretty intact original German Jagdpanzer 38. Most of the uh, so-called Jagdpanzer 38s or the popular name Hetzer are actually Swiss vehicles that were manufactured in 1948-49. Um, before export to Switzerland and there are many many differences to these vehicles but looking at the at this uh, the position that I'm in here is the commander's position and the commander sat here in this area and was completely cut off physically from the rest of the crew because the recoil guard from the gun is right in front of his feet so he sat here and he had a periscope for commanding in front. This bar here is for his periscope that he can put out through the top. That's the scissors periscope and range finder. But he was completely cut off from the rest of the crew who are over there on the left side of the vehicle. And we'll move over there now breach of the Pac-39 uh, which was taken over from the Jagdpanzer IV development and used in these Czech vehicles. Um, this is a, a specially designed uh, anti-tank version of the uh, L-48 gun that was used on the Panzer IV. The recoil guard is sitting here in front and the gunner's position is here. I'm sitting on a seat that belonged to the loader. The, there was some ammunition here on the left side and there was a number of racks down along the right side so that the loader could take the ammunition and feed it from the left side of the gun. The loader also had the duties that they operated a radio set which was the inset in this uh, niche in the firewall and could communicate with the vehicles of the rest of the unit. Moving forward into the position of the gunner, the gunner, like on a Strungerschutz, sat here. The, there was a per periscopic sight that they could sight out through like this and obviously they control the traverse and elevation. This is the traverse wheel down here. This is the elevation for the gun. And the Pac-39 is quite different to the post-war G-13s, which were equipped with a Sturmgeschütz gun, a KW, uh, uh, Sturmgeschütz K-40. Uh, um, and this one is a Pac-39, so the traverse goes to here and is controlled off a toothed segment around the base of the cast gun mantlet. Um, gives a very accurate uh, uh, sighting on location for the gun and gives you very um, good retention of the position for targeting the next round. Moving forward, I'm now in the driver's position, he had a, two periscopes here, uh, one at slightly different angle to the other. Uh, obviously this vehicle was used for testing so it's had a piece removed and put back in again. But the driver looked out through the periscopes here at the moment you can't see out through the opening. So the actual openings are higher up here and periscopic sights down here. His instrument panel was here. The gearbox is here and his controls are on either side, uh, giving him an ability to steer the vehicle. Quite difficult to get in and out of these. Um, and one of the uh, advances that uh, came with the uh, post-war vehicle, the G13, was that it had a, uh, an escape hatch 
on, underneath the loader seat here, but in the Jagdpanzer 38 that didn't exist. This is the transmission shaft running down there through a pipe protected. Um, so very clever use of uh, small space for this such a powerful gun and uh, uh, but very cramped from a crew point of view, but the crew would have as an improvement over the martyr that we talked about um, also at, at Arsenal. And it's an open top vehicle, this is closed in, has much thicker armour on the front and gives the crew a much better uh, situation. Now the, these vehicles came about as a result of the uh, virtual destruction of the Alket plant in Berlin by bombing at the end of 43. Um, the Allies secured almost direct hits and destroyed the uh, halls where the Sturmgeschütz was manufactured and at that time the uh, Sturmgeschütz was providing an absolutely primary purpose in uh, uh, fighting the uh, opposing tank and uh, armoured forces. So there was three measures brought in to uh, deal with that destruction of the main producer uh, of uh, Sturmgeschütz. One was that uh, Krupp in Grusenwerk in Magdeburg converted their Panzer IV production into Sturmgeschütz production. The second uh, change was that the uh, Vomag uh, factory was converted to you to develop and uh, build the Jagdpanzer IV and the third was the adoption of this vehicle in the BMM plant in Prague. Um, the, in the rush to develop this vehicle um, they used the uh, pack uh, 39 from the Jagdpanzer IV but this was a heavy gun mantlet and put a lot of weight on the front of the vehicle. This was uh, improved over time, they reduced the thickness of the side armour on the gun mantlet and uh, got the weight of the vehicle down and increased the springing at the front of the, of the vehicle. But the reason they built these as opposed to building Sturmgeschütz is when a delegation went and looked at the facilities in BMM in Prague, they found that the cranes weren't capable of taking Sturmgeschütz and the facilities weren't uh, capable of taking Sturmgeschütz, otherwise they would have stopped production of the 38T type chassis and gone over to Sturmgeschütz production. Subsequently in September of uh, 1944, the production at Skoda came online, uh, initially uh, producing Jagdpanzer 38 in the Pilsen factory, but it, by 1945 they were also producing a proportion of the Jagdpanzer uh, 38s in their uh, subsidiary works at Koningrads. Uh, so Skoda were producing a small number in Koningrads and a larger number at Pilsen. Um, so there was three plants producing these. So uh, close on 3,000 of them got built between uh, beginning March of uh, 44 through to uh, May of 45. One of the remarkable things about this exhibit in Arsenal is it's uh, quite original. Many of the uh, original markings are still in place uh, wherever they haven't been worn off. For example, here to the right of the gun, this bracket here is for holding a Wischstange, which was the cleaning uh, device, and the text Wischstange is still intact there. And on this side of the gun, there's similar texts about tools that were stored on, on the gun, and this is on top of the original Elfenbein, although obviously at this stage it's very uh, co much covered in dust and so forth over after 60 odd years of sitting. So quite remarkable that such uh, uh, original text and so forth is in place.